Vaccines must be handled, stored, and transported with care to ensure their effectiveness. In this short video, you'll learn how to define planned transport for vaccines and identify the steps and materials needed for planned, also known as non-emergency transport. To get started, planned transport refers to the redistribution of vaccines to satellite or off-site vaccination clinics. It also could refer to the movement of doses that are about to expire so they can be used where they are needed rather than wasted. Ideally, vaccines should always be shipped from the manufacturer to administration sites. Transporting vaccines between sites should only be done when necessary. When planning an off-site clinic, such as a community vaccination event, it is best to have the vaccines delivered directly to the facility. If this is not possible, it may be necessary to transport the vaccines. When planning for transport, calculate the time of transport and ensure the transport and clinic workday do not exceed eight hours. For example, if transport to an off-site clinic is one hour each way, the clinic may run for up to six hours. If transporting directly to a new destination, the total transport time should be under eight hours unless the manufacturer guidance says differently. If you must transport vaccines, here are four steps to a successful process. Step one, determine the transport system and gather the necessary supplies. Portable vaccine refrigerator units are the preferred vaccine transport system when available. However, for short trips, qualified containers and pack out materials may be used. Transport should be reserved for refrigerated vaccines only. Frozen vaccines should not be transported outside of an emergency. Step two, pack vaccines for transport. Follow your facility's transport plan when packing refrigerated vaccines. If the vaccine requires a diluent, ensure there are equal amounts of vaccines and diluents. You also can refer to the CDC storage and handling toolkit for detailed packing instructions. Packout materials used with your qualified containers can include coolant materials, such as phase change materials or conditioned water bottles for refrigerated vaccines, insulated materials like bubble wrap or corrugated cardboard, and a temperature monitoring device, such as a digital data logger or DDL. Step three, monitor vaccine temperatures. Use a DDL to monitor any changes in temperatures. If using a company or personal vehicle to transport the vaccine, place the vaccine container inside of the passenger compartment and not in the trunk or bed of a truck, which may be too hot or too cold. Move transport containers directly to a vehicle that is already at a comfortable temperature. And avoid leaving containers in areas where they are exposed to direct sunlight. Always document temperature readings and how much time vaccines spend in transport on a temperature log. Step four, arrive and unpack the vaccines at your destination. Before unpacking your vaccines at the destination, make sure to record the time, temperature, and your initials in the temperature log. Then quickly transfer the vaccines to a refrigerated storage unit or administer them by the end of the vaccine clinic day. Take immediate action if you note any temperatures outside the recommended range. This is called a temperature excursion. Label any impacted vaccines, do not use awaiting guidance, and store them appropriately until a decision can be made about whether they are safe. Follow the steps outlined in your standard operating procedures, SOPs, for temperature excursions, which may include contacting the vaccine manufacturer for guidance. For help with your vaccine-related questions, including those on storage, preparation, transport, and administration, contact CDC at nipinfo at cdc.gov. Please visit CDC's website for more training and resources to support your vaccination efforts, including the Vaccine Storage and Handling Toolkit, Pink Book, and You Call the Shots web-based trainings.